The following video covers the installation of the PLP compression splice for ACSR and ACSS conductors. This video is for demonstration purposes only. Be sure to read and completely understand the application procedure supplied with the product before installing it. The compression splice includes an aluminum alloy splice body, a galvanized steel core splice tube, and a steel ball for plugging the fill up port. Required tools include compression press with the appropriate size dies, conductor cutter and strand removal tool, compression filler compound, caulking gun, conductor wire brush, hammer, flathead screwdriver, pliers, file, measuring tape, and utility knife. Begin by cleaning and wire brushing the entire area to be covered by the compression hardware per your standard company practices. Check that no residue or surface particles remain. Remove the plastic plug from the aluminum body and inspect the inside bores of the hardware to ensure that there are no sharp points or other defects. If flash or small aluminum bits are present, clear out with a spare piece of conductor. Measure the length of the aluminum splice body. Measure and mark half this length on the conductor from the cut strand ends. This mark will be important later when centering the splice. Measure from the knurl in the middle of the galvanized steel splice tube to the end. Add one inch to this length to allow for aluminum strand expansion when the splice tube is applied. Mark this length on the conductor as the point where the aluminum strands will be cut back. Apply tape approximately one inch back from the cutting mark to secure the aluminum strands and maintain the conductor diameter after the cut is made. Cut the outer aluminum strands at the cutting mark to expose the steel core. Take care not to damage the steel core strands during this process. To prevent damage and reduce preparation time, PLP recommends the use of a conductor trimming tool. After all the aluminum strands are removed, any flash or burrs on the outside can be removed with a file. Secure the conductor core strands with tape. A hose clamp can also be used to help hold the strands in place while tape is applied. Mark the depth of the steel tube to the center knurl on the conductor core strands. Repeat all preparation and measurement steps for the other conductor to be spliced. Slide the aluminum splice body all the way onto the conductor past the exposed steel core. Remove the tape from the conductor core and insert it into the steel core splice, lining up the end with the mark previously made on the strands. Repeat this step with the other conductor and ensure that the core splice is properly centered. Install, clean, and lubricate the correct compression die. This is marked on the core splice tube. Insert the assembly into the press with one side of the center knurl lined up with the edge of the die. Before compressing, double check that the ends of the splice tube are lined up with the marks on the core strands. Compress the splice tube, starting at the center knurl and working all the way to the end. Compression should overlap by about 25%, and the dies must be pushed to their maximum extent in the press. Splice curvature should be kept to a minimum, and tips on this can be found in the application procedure. Repeat this step for the other side of the splice tube. Slide the aluminum splice body towards the other conductor until the aluminum strands enter the end. Remove the tape and continue sliding the splice on until the end lines up with the mark made earlier on the conductor strands. Inject appropriate inhibitor compound through the filler hole in the aluminum body. For ACSS conductors, the inhibitor must be rated for temperatures up to 250 degrees Celsius. Cease application when inhibitor seeps out the ends of the hardware. This will continue to ooze out the ends as compressions are applied. Seal the filler hole by inserting the stainless steel ball. The plastic bag containing the ball can be used to help position it. Tap the ball into the filler hole using a hammer and remove the plastic bag if used. Peen over the aluminum edges of the filler hole with a hammer and flathead screwdriver to secure the ball into place. With the appropriate dies installed, position the aluminum splice in the press and check alignment on the conductor. Compress the splice tube, starting at the press first knurl and working all the way to the end, including the tapered portion. Compression should overlap by about 25%, and the dies must be pushed to their maximum extent in the press. 
Repeat this step for the other side of the splice tube, leaving the center section between the knurls uncompressed. Clean off any excess tape or inhibitor. Any flash left on the aluminum tube after compression should be removed with pliers and sharp edges should be filed to a smooth finish. Once compressed and cleaned, the splice application is complete. All safety guidelines set forth in the appropriate application procedure for this product must be reviewed and followed prior to installing this product. The installation shown is intended to illustrate the application method of the product only. It is not intended to supersede any standard utility safety guidelines and practices or use of required protective equipment.